As we travel through this mystical life on earth, don't know what we're going to end up, don't know what we're going to endure, we meet all different types of people. Some good, some bad, some encouraging. I ran into a, a couple that really inspired me. They, just to hear their story, was amazing how they got together how they went through life and how in my eyes they became successful they kind of like a role model of life we, we think of the bible as being a guide to life we think of the laws as being a guide to life but to talk to these two people and the way they went through life and what they did and how they ended up it's a pretty good guide to life Hope you enjoy. There's room for you, room for me, for gentle hearts and opportunity. It's the It's the bigger love of the family. Welcome to another episode of Chin Wagon with Ruck. Today's episode, we have here Dana Day, my guest co host. Hello. We have Bill, Bill Mayo, and we have his wife, Sandy. Sandy Mayo. Thank God for being today. So, Bill, how old are you today? I am 64 years old today. 64 years old today. Are you still working? No, I'm retired. I've been retired mm -hmm. about a year now. Oh, about a year now. Okay. Mm -hmm. all right, all right. So, where are you from? Originally from Queens, New York. Ah, you are a Yankee. Yes, sir. I'm proud of it. <laughs> You're proud of it. Okay. All right. Queens, New York. Queens, New York. Okay. And say, how old are you, if you want to say? I'm 61. Proud okay. to be 61. And, and, and where are you from? I'm from Jamaica, West Indies. Jamaica, as for Jamaica, New York, or the real country Jamaica? The real country Jamaica. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. No problem, man. <laughs> See, we, we're both from Jamaica. Oh, you from Jamaica? Oh. Jamaica, Queens. Okay. <laughs> that's Jamaica, what he Queens. told my mom. Right, oh, man. that's said, how. Mom, I'm from Jamaica, too. Well, wow. you know, she, she I'm from the island well, the, of Long. Right, right. She didn't detect any, she didn't detect a, uh, the accent. accent. Yeah. So she's like, you're not from the island? I said, I am. I'm from the island of Long, Long Island. <laughs> oh, that was clever. That was clever. <laughs> so how did y'all meet? <laughs> Um, we actually went to high school together, mm -hmm. so we're both from Queens. I grew up in Queens, New York, mm -hmm. and but he was much older. Oh than Lord, I was. <laughs> she said much <laughs> because I got skipped. I got mm -hmm. skipped into school, so he was, you know, uh, older than so I am. We, we, we skipped into school. So we. Oh, okay. So I went to a private school in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So when I came here, I was advanced. I was supposed to go to the sixth grade. But I went to the eighth grade. Whoa! And did that in three months. Right. So we we were two grades school. apart in high school. I, she was so, just for the record. Okay. We went to the same high school, Andrew Jackson High School in Queens. Uh huh. It's Cambridge Heights, New York. But um, we didn't know each other in high school. We never met. She says she knew who I was because I played ball. Oh, but I didn't know who she was because she was a couple of grades behind me. So I, I, she was, used to run with the Jamaican crowd. I didn't really know her well. Mm -hmm. But to her point, when she came to the States, when she was, what, 13? She was put in the eighth grade. 12. 12. Okay. Mm -hmm. she, she, put, she went to the eighth grade. She only spent like a month in the eighth grade, seventh grade. And then she got skipped to the ninth grade. I never she went never to went to the eighth grade. grade. So she... I didn't go to the seventh. Oh, you didn't go to the seventh grade. I know it was one grade and you didn't I go did to. The oh, that's right. You grade. didn't go. She got skipped from the seventh grade, went to the eighth grade. Was only in the eighth grade for like a month Three or so, months. Three months. Three and then months. in high school. So I said, "Look at look at God. Look at He had to move heaven and earth to get you in the same building as me. In the same building. <laughs> so in the same as him. get out in my orbit. You know." <laughs> I was like, look at God. Well, I was working way back then. Way back then. Working it out. So, so we actually went, so long story short, we went to the same high school, didn't know each other, but we met as undergraduates at Hofstra University out in Hempstead, Long Island. Mm -hmm. I was a tutor counselor, and Sandy was coming through the uh, pre-freshman summer orientation program. 
And so when she arrived on campus, I was actually assigned as her counselor. So you was a junior? I was going into my junior year. I was okay. rising junior, okay. and she was an incoming freshman. Okay. And so I knew, I saw her name, and so she was from Andrew Jackson. I was like, okay, let's you know, she's from my mom. And I had gone back and did some rec uh, recruiting there, but I didn't, for some reason, I don't know why I didn't see you on college night or whatever that was. But anyway, um, it was my turn to go downstairs to uh, sit at the, uh, the, the front desk of the dorms to greet students. And I come downstairs on the elevator and the doors open up. And it's oh. Sandy, yeah, Sandy and her mom and uh, your mom's friend will stand there, get ready to get on the elevator to go through it. And so the doors open, I see her. And I'm like, okay, I recognize this guy. I'm not, I, I know her from somewhere, but I know her. I said, this must be Sandy Sheriff, her maiden name. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a fun summer. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put hand together. Okay, it's okay. It's going to be a fun summer. I, that's I, I, hear, I hear something that's the same in two of the uh, last stories. So Pierre and Samaria knew each other in high school but never dated in high school mm -hmm. and it wasn't until later and then they just and said they of, went to high school together but kind of didn't run in the same crowd right. it was kind of the same yeah, thing yeah. So that was interesting uh -huh. okay. <laughs> now I'm, I'm going to take it back mm -hmm. we talking about just you now mm -hmm. your household growing up mm -hmm. come from a two parent household one parent household aunties what okay so uh, start out uh, my mom, dad, me and my younger sister who's five years younger than me um, who's gone on to be with the Lord now. She passed away two years ago now. I'm sorry. Uh, my dad as well. Um, we grew up in uh, Corona, New York, initially, is where I was born in Flushing. And then we, uh, my dad was uh, into uh, publishing. He was in the uh, book publishing. And so um, we bought a house in Queens Village, New York, which is right on the borderline of Queens Village and Camber Heights. We moved there in January of 19... 65, and that's the house I grew up in. I was mm -hmm. in that house from that year till, you know, actually graduating from college. But he and my mom separated, uh, I guess it was, we had been there for about maybe three or four years, mm -hmm. 65, so yeah, by 68, 67, 68, they separated, and then in 69, they divorced. So our lifestyle changed dramatically mm -hmm. in the course of those years. We were, my mom and dad, me and my younger sister, you know, I guess low middle class family, you know, we had a car, we had a house, you know, mm -hmm. things were pretty good, we didn't want for anything, Christmas was wonderful, you know, everything was good growing up. But then when my mom and dad uh, separated and ultimately divorced, my mom was basically the sole breadwinner, our lives changed like significantly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, there was, uh, Sandy's heard these stories before, I mean, there was, um, you know, occasions where we didn't have any heat. You know, we would go like whole winters with no gas, you know, no gas heat. I used to sleep in my clothes, mm. I used to take showers and cold water. What age were you? This was like nine, ten. Nine, ten. Yeah, like eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. Nine, ten. So That's, it wasn't like it is, like in today's time, if that happens, the government made sure that this man going to pay for the own kids. No, or, or the government gives. Or the government the pays for them kids, mm -hmm. so you don't have to struggle. So it wasn't like that back then. Uh, well, you know, it's, you don't know what you don't know. Right. right. So my mom didn't really know. And she was she would get money from my dad. You know, I don't want to put my dad out there like he was, you know, like wasn't doing anything for yeah. us, because mm -hmm. he did. Mm -hmm. But it's just, you know, when you go from a certain lifestyle to now, he's helping but he's he's living his own life too, right, yes. and then you know she wasn't really making you know much money, so it was just it was it was difficult. It was, mm. you know, we we could feel the difference, mm -hmm. but now I say that in hindsight, because at the time things were, everything was fine, right? right? I, I, you know, other than not having the heat, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But you know we you know we ate every night. You know we were living in the house still. We had you know clothes and friends and fun. Mm -hmm. You know, kids, you know. Yeah. You just want to go outside and have fun, right. <laughs> you know. So, it so wasn't, I didn't feel any kind of way like we were deprived or you know lacking anything. So it did that affect your schooling? In a, yeah, it actually did. I was uh, always a good student because uh, I loved to read from an early age. So I was very you know good in school. I was always in like the the advanced class, whatever mm -hmm. the top class was. Yeah. I was always in that class. Up until about fourth grade, right around the time my parents separated, mm -hmm. I was acting out in school. Mm -hmm. I started, you know, like playing hooky 
and talking in class and just, you know, just so being, academically being a student. Academically and behaviorally, did it change both? Your behavior and the, the academic? Yeah, my, the behavior mm -hmm. was, I guess, impacted my academics to the degree that, you know, I was not trying as hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, you know, and this is problematic for us, this is we talk about this during Black History Month, you know, we're talking, this is like now the early, mid-60s and then the early 70s. Mm -hmm. At that time, it wasn't cool to be too good at school. Right. 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 So that's not, yeah. You know, like, like I used to like not, like when we would walk home at the end of the school year, I wouldn't show my friends my report card because I had done really good. Right. And everybody was like, oh, I failed this or laughing, I got a C or D and this. And, you know, I wasn't, I was getting good grades, mm -hmm. but I wasn't making a big deal out of it because, you know, that wasn't, that wasn't, norm. that wasn't cool. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. It wasn't cool to be, you know, like, so I would, you know, just act like, I was, nah, yeah, me too. Yeah. Oh yeah. I failed that class too. I aced the class. I didn't fail the class. Wow. <laughs> but um. But anyway. But uh, yeah. So I guess it did impact me to mm -hmm. the extent that I just wasn't trying as hard. Right. And again, it's one of those things. In retrospect, yeah. You, as a kid, you don't know why you all of a sudden you're starting to cut up like this. Mm -hmm. But I guess that must have been my way of coping with or dealing with right. their separation. Absolutely. And, and, so, and the know, change. Yeah, the change. Yeah, change your day, change day, your day, lifestyle. Not every day. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I can see that. Yeah. That's probably what it was. Well, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sam, we want to go to your back to your childhood. Okay. Now, from zero to twelve, you was in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So, how was life in Jamaica? Um, for a child, it was good. It mm -hmm. was good, but there were issues. Um, my dad was an alcoholic, and my mom decided to leave and come to the United States when I was four. Whoa! <laughs> you said mom. Mom. So just mm -hmm. dad stayed there, you and mom came. Right. And siblings? dad was just doing his own thing. Not you and mom, mm -hmm. just your mom. Mm -hmm. No, my dad was doing his own thing. But and mom, my mom came was to the here. Mm -hmm. So we were raised by, I lived with my mother's mom, my father's mom, and a great aunt before I came here. Wow. So mom came here first. Mm -hmm. it, that, it, so, right. so, so mom mm -hmm. came here first to get established when she brings out. Mm -hmm. Cause we don't heard that from other. Uh, yeah, people who are from other countries. Other countries yeah. Say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So when you was in Jamaica by yourself without mom, and you started school, did that affect anything? School was one of the most important things <laughs> in your life. That's good. Really? And yes. School was it, nothing else. Why? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I guess because they figure if you're educated, mm -hmm. you will grow up and do well. Mm -hmm. So that was instilled in me at an early age. That's why she got skipped all them grades. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> my focus <laughs> academically. Yeah, that makes sense. Spot on. Yeah, mm -hmm. school okay. was huge. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. Because, like I said, in other country, they, they believe in that, too. I guess it's just mm -hmm. America that really don't last a day. It's just a little lax. Right. Mm -hmm. When it comes to schooling. Okay. Right. Schooling is so important that the teachers can beat you. <laughs> we need to get yeah. corporate punch. Yeah, we need a whole yeah. other word for corporate punch. Wow. You know, you yeah. have to know your, your numbers. You have to know your times tables. Mm -hmm. Your ABCs or the songs they mm -hmm. uh, taught you. Mm -hmm. And there was a period where I went to a, a prep school and we would all stand in a line. Mm -hmm. And the headmistress would have the cane just hitting in her hand. And you're saying your timetables. And if you mess up, That's she can hear you and you get whacked across the back. <laughs> so it's a lot of pressure. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, I bet you one thing, but, I don't know mine. No, no, no. <laughs> if so you, you don't know, that's all you knew. So right. it wasn't pressure. It was you just do your work. Mm -hmm. So 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 was there yeah. such thing as homework as well? There was homework okay. as well. So yeah. Now you remember what we were talking about the other day about different learning styles, and mm -hmm. I was saying when we grew up, it was just one style. You learn it, you get it, or you don't get it, right. you fail. And over time. Now what I'm hearing from her is the same way. You know, the teacher standing there with a stick. Mm -hmm. Ain't you no thing is, yo, you didn't teach me that way. No, you want to talk my class the same way with everybody. Mm -hmm. You're going to get it. You better go home and learn or you're going to get beat with a stick. 
I like that. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, that should be all the way to 12. Right. right. Exactly. And then mama said. Exactly. All right, so now fast forward, you over here in the States. Mm-hmm. Now, are you over here with just your mom, or did your dad come along too? And it... No, just to, um, just my two brothers and I came mm-hmm. to live with my mom. Mm-hmm. How did y'all get here? I'm just curious. By airplane. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Air Jamaica. Right. Air Jamaica. Just, and, but just, and your brothers, younger or older than you? They're older. Two older brothers. That's and, right. You and my mother's here, sister so. accompanied us. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you, you get over here, and now you're in a, a single-parent household. Single-parent household. Mm-hmm. And now you're in school, you're skipping grades. You, so you, when you get over here, you're doing well as for education, right? Because it was like, ain't nobody beating me. I'm not <laughs> right. standing in the line. I, I can learn if I want to learn, but you wanted to learn. Right. Mm-hmm. The only Foundation. drawback was, even though um, English is spoken in Jamaica and here, the dialect was different. Absolutely. So I really didn't understand what my teachers were saying. Oh my goodness. Whoa, really? Yes. In fact, my both my brothers were placed backwards in school. No, my older brother was placed backwards. My second brother was in the right grade and I got skipped. So all three of us started high school together. <laughs> All That's three. amazing. Yes, yes, and they were placed in ESL classes. Mm-hmm. English it's as called a in, yeah, English as a second language. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I was lost on that. I know. Yeah. And so I just sit in the classrooms, and I didn't worry about anything because I'll just go home and read the book. <laughs> <laughs> so the teacher told me like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I don't know nothing you say. What about? Maybe tenth grade, I started to understand them better. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Wow, so, that's very interesting. so what language do Jamaicans speak? It's called patois. Patois. Yes, it's like French, mm-hmm. African, and English. Whoa! All mixed in. It's Parlez vous français? <laughs> <laughs> and see, wow. I don't understand French, but some of our words and some of our slangs are similar. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, say you're welcome to the show in Poutois, wherever you say I can't Patois. All right, my glad to see all alone, all right, yes, sir. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, no offense to you, but I just love foreigners. By me being born and raised over here, I, I don't really see anything except on TV, so when I meet one in person, I'm fascinated. <laughs> you know, I, I want to I just look at you and just. I just get out into you. I want to hear you speak. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I, I love that. And, and that your brain is able to speak another language, learn our language, know our language, and everything that, around you. Yeah, that just fascinates me. I love yeah, it. That is, it's interesting. As long as you know, we've been married now, what, 30? Nine years. Eight, nine years. <laughs> um, I'll be thirty nine. All right, <laughs> <laughs> I, can <understand> the <laughs> I can understand and translate anything she'll say in patois, but I can't do it. I can't right. say it. Mm-hmm. You know, huh. but I can. Anything she says, I can mm-hmm. tell you what she's saying, yeah, word for word. You, you didn't want to but, teach you? Well, I've been here there for so long. I just, in New York. No. Yeah, it's, 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 it's common. It's a, it's a yes. melting pot yeah. of all Patois, different. Patois, Spanish, you know. You, you know, have your friends are from Puerto Rico, so you from, from South Africa. Africa. Yeah. Yeah. You you know, everybody, Haitians. Yeah. I mean, oh, you yes. know. So. Kind of like Georgia now, the melting pot of the town. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 True that, true that. Yeah, you didn't know all those. All right, now who we're going to jump back to Bill. Now, we're talking about education, you in school. When did you get your head back on? Or did you get your head back on? <laughs> yeah, you know, but interestingly, I wouldn't say I got my head on right really until I got to college. And you said, well, how did you get to college? Right. right. <laughs> but I guess what was interesting was no matter how much I would cut up, no matter how much I would fool around in school or what have you, I always, like, I, I would walk up to that line, but I wouldn't cross the line. Like, I know I'm not... Sorry for me, you know. I, you know, like, I'm not going to do nothing to... To cause myself to fail, I'm not gonna fail because I know I'm I'm not supposed to fail. The, the, the objective in school is to learn and to pass, pass right. the class, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna do that, but I wasn't. Um, I didn't have a sense of scholarship that I was really trying hard. I was kind of getting by on, you know, just my ability to 
learn fast and remember things. And so I would do enough to, to pass, you know, enough to be mildly successful, but I wasn't really like going for it, trying to be the valedictorian or trying to be <laughs> an honor roll. I wasn't, those, those weren't even goals of mine. I wasn't even, that wasn't on my radar until I got to, I always wanted to go to college though. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's the objective of school? To learn and to do as well as you can in your courses. Where you get that from? I, I guess from my mom and dad. You know, just that was, if you're there, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're supposed to be doing, do it well. You know, that, so you think you got that from your parents? I think so. The objective yeah. of school. You know what? I got it from my parents and I also got it from my older cousin. I had an older cousin who's like my big brother, mm -hmm. uh, Ronald Long, three years older than me. And I was his shadow growing up. So I don't <laughs> have any older siblings. I have a young, one younger sister. Mm -hmm. And I, I tell Sandy, I've told Sandy this story before. I used to hear my mom talking to her sisters, my aunt and them on the phone. Mm -hmm. And I would hear them talking about my cousin, like, oh, yeah, he did good in school and he's da 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 da. So, because I want to do everything he do. Right. Me hearing him had done good in school, I was like, okay, I got to do good in school. Okay. And then I would hear my mom talking about me, saying, oh, I had done this, and just saying good things about me. And so, somewhere in the recesses of my mind, I guess in my subconscious, I wanted to make sure that I lived up to that. Okay. Like, I wanted to be yeah. the good person mm -hmm. that she was saying that I was. Mm -hmm. So, I would I make like sure that. I did those things. So I could hear that, so she could have more stuff to say to her friends <laughs> about I was doing good. Okay, the accolades. That was, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I, I, I like that because you know, I know you know, I know you know. When I say you on top of the building, saying it, that y'all had friends or new people that thought just the opposite of what you thought. School is for me to eat lunch and, and act up and mm -hmm. flaunt. Mm -hmm. So that's why when you said that, I'm like, when you get that phone, a lot of people don't feel that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you the know, object of school is yeah. to learn and to pay. And unfortunately. In the majority of the schools that we went to, that was prevalent because, you know, growing up in, in Queens, the areas that we grew up in, predominantly black neighborhoods. In fact, well, actually, where we moved to, we were the first black family on our block in 1965 when we moved to that Nashville Boulevard in Queens, wow. Queens Village. If you look at my class pictures, it was me and two other black kids in kindergarten. Third grade, it was about seven of us. Oh, excuse me, first grade, seven of us. Second grade, it was our about, you know, a quarter of the class, third grade, it was half the class, and my fourth grade, it was all black. Whoa. And it was that way till we graduated from high school. The rest of elementary school, all of middle school was junior high school, and all of high school was all black students. And you just think of the era that they grew up yeah, in and how it just, how life was changing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was the, it was the, so you, the Civil Rights Act. Right Going into you know black empowerment, mm -hmm. you know black exploitation films yeah. in the seventies yeah. and all of that. Uh, so yeah, I, it, it was funny how um, I remember we were pen pals with this with this school in Manhattan. Our teacher, and this was third grade, she had us uh, communicate with this other this other class. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling the uh, my pen pal that um, I was a, a a proud black student. <laughs> this is like third yeah, grade, right. but you know, but I but because you know like my world was. You know, mm -hmm. hearing about Martin, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, yeah. and Angela Davis, and you know, mm -hmm. Red, Black, and Green. You know, the Black Power Fist. Right. I, mean, I used to have all this stuff in my room and everything, and so that was just kind of, you know, I had this groundswell of Black pride mm -hmm. because you know our neighborhood was all black. You know, and, and, and so and it's the store owners at that time were black. You know, we were owning stores and stuff at that time. Yeah, we were. And so, so, you, so your pen pal was at Manhattan. Yeah, because our third grade teacher, her uh -huh. her college roommate mm -hmm. was a teacher also at a school in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And so they would write to us and we would write to them and, 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 and share stories about, you know, what we liked about school. Did you know you had a, a black or a white pen pal? <laughs> it, it was a black black kid named Craig. Okay. Because we had a field trip. Because <laughs> we, we met, they they uh, we uh, did a field trip together. Okay, that's our class awesome. met their class. Yeah, okay, okay. okay. It's like, no, Craig. <laughs> I was just like when I, I I don't know much about New York, but when I hear Manhattan and when I hear Queens, I hear two different things. And mm -hmm. you know, and it yeah, may have been from media yeah. or television or whatever. But I'm Those thinking, are the uh, two Ooh, of the Manhattan two of the five different. boroughs of okay. New York. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you, you got your head back on straight to go to college. <laughs> yes, I, I always wanted to go to college because I played ball, and I knew if you wanted to 
play ball professionally, like all professional ball basketball players went to college. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, okay, you gotta go to college to play ball. Mm -hmm. That was my mindset about college all when right. I was a kid, when I was you know, younger. So high school you was an athlete? Yes, yeah. yeah. And, and basketball was your sport? Uh-huh. Whatever. Whatever. Yes, yes. Okay, so just, just basketball? Yeah. No. Well, you know, it was funny, back then, you know, you hear about these, you know, like kids now that play football, basketball, mm -hmm. track. There were so many kids, and it was so competitive. You had to pick your sport. <laughs> like you couldn't be, you, you had to, you had to you master whatever it was that you was gonna play. Yeah. Because there was probably you weren't probably gonna play anything else unless you was exceptionally large. Wow. <laughs> you, know, you know, you weren't you know already six foot something. Okay. You know, you were playing the sport that you chose to play. Okay. All right. So That's your good. your track in your mind, your track to college was basketball. Right. So it wasn't as far as, well, that could be success too. Playing basketball, you want to go to the NBA. Right. So that's what geared you toward college. At that time. At yeah, that this, time. Is, this is, you know, like junior high school. And everything. But then when you start getting to your middle, into it, late mm -hmm. teens, like high school, you start realizing, okay, bro, you know, you ain't, you ain't going to the NBA. You know, like right. you, you might not even be playing college ball. Right. But college is still the place to go because you need to get more education because the, my understanding is the more education you have, the better opportunity you'll have later in life to have the kind of success or career you might want to have. Where did you, you get that understanding from? Mm -hmm. So part of that was we were in the college-bound program in high school. Like if you wanted, if you had aspirations mm -hmm. to go to college, there was a, a track, a mm -hmm. curriculum in high school mm -hmm. that would expose you to preparation for the SAT right. and, college give, yeah, and give you other kind of um, instruction to help you to apply to different schools and so forth. And so I was in that track, and then I also, um, I guess I had um, an older cousin on my dad's side of family, my, my cousin I was talking about uh, previously on my mom's side of family, I had another cousin on my dad's side of family who did go and play college ball and, and, and graduated from uh, college in, in uh, uh, West Virginia. And so knowing that he had gone to school, again, me wanting to emulate my mm -hmm. older cousins, mm -hmm. I was like, okay. Yeah, he went to college, and now he's going to be coming out of college. I think he was going to be teaching or something. So I was like, okay, he's you know he's going to be doing well for himself. That's that's a, 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 something I need to follow. Tell me, tell me, you you tell me you hear what Pierre said, and he just said it. I did, I did. So you you had so called role models that kind yes. of yes geared you like I want to be like him. I want to do what he yes, did. Yes, I'm seeing what they're doing. I'm seeing them. It's an eye opener succeed. for me because I didn't realize that's what. Pierre was looking at in that manner. Yeah. They were look. He was looking at other people. He hadn't. He didn't have the family like that. But he. He said he how he would see this man and this guy and see that okay, how he, he, was had, he was living right. this way. Right. He's exactly. Like, okay, so I need to be doing something. Right. That'll get me that. <laughs> and that's it. That's exactly. That's exactly it. That's exactly that's it. Crazy. It's not like somebody came and sat me down. Right. And said, hey, you right. should do this. You should do and that. Some, I was just like, okay. And, you know, it's it's funny. I guess it's something just in you. Like I always knew that I would be okay in life. Really? Yeah, like I always felt like, like my life is gonna be fine. I just got, I, I don't know what it's gonna be, but I know it's gonna be okay. That's good. You know, like, cause I just- Why, you, why you thought that? Mm -hmm. I guess because I always had a lot of self-esteem. I had a <laughs> high self-esteem. And so because I had that high self-esteem, my, my thing was, okay, what, wherever I find myself, and whatever that whatever is required to be successful in that situation, I'm going to succeed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out whatever you like. If it's like we were talking about school earlier, mm -hmm. like okay, if you're in school, you're supposed to be a good student. Yeah. You do well in that. That's what I'm gonna do. And if I'm over here at a party, and you got to dance well, then I'm gonna dance. You know, mm -hmm. right? If I, you know, whatever. You, you go, what you pick, right? You gonna play ball? You know, I'm a hoop. You know, mm -hmm. so whatever okay. you're in, you just. That's a mindset. So that, that, that's, I think that's a personality. Mm, trait? I, yeah, I feel like when he came out, the, or when he was in the womb, that's what God instilled in him. So when he came out, it just, okay. it just manifested itself. Okay. And his mom, you know, because I met Bill when I was 17, so I've known them for a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, his mom instilled a lot of that in him. Mm -hmm. Confidence. She was always, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yes. You got She it. was always right. pushing yeah. him. That's good. And, and letting him know. I think at a young age, she let him know that she had high expectations right. of him. That's great. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Take his cheerleader. <laughs> All 
Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How's your turn? Yeah. <laughs> you was in high school. Well, I already know that you got. I like I like the phrases you skipped because it, it threw me up. Like, what that mean? But no, I got okay. it. So you got placed up, mm-hmm. and you graduated. But while you was in high school, you had thoughts on going to college. I did. Why? Wow. Um, on pathway also, right? I ran track. All right. Okay. And you know, running track, you become a very disciplined person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I was already disciplined from for sure. <laughs> I'll answer that one. <laughs> From being raised by old people. <laughs> you know, so um, I did well in school until the 10th grade. I didn't do one in, t- in the 10th grade because my dad died. Mm. And then we all had to go back home for the funeral. And so when I got back to Jamaica, I didn't want to come back. Oh, wow. Ooh, I did not want to come back. Mm-hmm. Wow, so. <laughs> and so my great aunt, my aunt Joyce, my favorite person in the whole wide world, <laughs> said to me, do you want to go back or do you want to stay? And I said, I want to stay. Ooh. Was that in Jamaica? Or? In Jamaica. Oh, you wanted to yeah, stay in Jamaica? Yeah, okay. back so she got a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> but my mom won. <laughs> okay, okay. My mom won. But you would never have met her. I would have never met. But wow. you remember a little earlier, God. God, 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 God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but that was word. And you know, during okay. high school, my great aunt Joyce Coley that raised me, her daughter went to, I think it was VCU. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so when she was packing up to go to college, they took me. On the trip. Oh, that's exciting. To go and make her bed and fix up yeah. her room and, you know, go shopping. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to be doing that when I okay. yeah. graduate from high school, that's too. That's another model. That's mm-hmm. another model. Yeah. 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 And her sister had been to college, mm-hmm. you know, so I had seen them. Mm-hmm. And her sister, Marlene, Coley, and Charles, I was like their little daughter because mm-hmm. they were older than me. And so I would stay with them, you know, for some summers and saw how they lived and, Mm -hmm. you know. That's great. Yeah. So I had great role models. That's awesome. You know. The fact that you almost stayed in Jamaica. I'm talking about just the the, the choices that we make in life. It really affect us because if you had to stay there, he wouldn't have met you. Right. Nope. Right. Sam and Pierre won't be together. Right. No. There'd be no Warren Warren You probably wouldn't be together. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And Warren with me is yeah. the change of events. Change of events. Yeah. Gosh. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Thank God he's in charge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if it don't love us, we don't mess it up. We don't really yeah. mess it up. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So we can look back and say, you know, mm. it was a wonderful life. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. That was a close call. It's Sandy had a stain in Jamaica, how different their lives would have been. Wow. Ooh, great story from Bill, great story from Sam, Sandy, but that's just part one. So you gotta stay tuned for next week to catch part two of the Mayo. From the mind, to the lips, to the heavens. Until next time, peace from the heart. Bigger.